Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today I am ready to give my full review and overall thoughts on this guy right here. This is the newest OTF to hit the market, and it is the Axial Shift. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 8.19 inches, a blade length coming in at 3.3 inches, and a blade width right around 3 quarters of an inch or 750 thousandths. We have a blade thickness of 125 thousandths, and uh, this particular blade steel right here is S35VN, but keep in mind you, can, you also have options for um, all of Axial's OTF knives to get them in 20CV as well. Uh, blade style on this blade here is a clip point, but they also offer a worn cliff version, which I may or may not have picked one of those up. I cannot confirm nor deny that yet. Um, but who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe you'll hear a little something about it later on in the, uh, Wayne Sharp World universe. Um, we have a flat grind on the blade with a handle length coming in at 4.75 inches, a handle thickness at 460 thousandths, and a handle material, or a handle width of one inch. Uh, the handle material on this guy is aluminum, and we have a locking mechanism of, well, it's, it's, it's an OTF, so whatever locking mechanism an, an OTF uses. Uh, we have a user of a right or left hand tip down carry, but of course, this obviously isn't flipping open, it's shooting out, so tip down carry on an OTF is uh, very much the norm. We have a weight of three and a half mount ounces. This is completely USA made and a price, get this. And now this price ranges. Um, you can get them as low as $215 direct from Axial's website. Or you can get them from various retailers at anywhere from $229 to $239. Now, I, I do have to throw an opinion in here, or a thought. It's more of a thought than opinion. Um, but I did find it quite odd that you can get these knives direct from the retailer, or direct from the manufacturer, less than you would pay the retailer. It's usually the other way around, and that's done to support the retailer um, that is buying the product from the manufacturer. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, obviously, as a consumer, most of us are probably like, oh, sweet, I can get them for 215 bucks from Axial. But then the problem is retailers are buying them from Axial and selling them for more, which hurts their chances of selling theirs. So I, I, I don't know how I like that. Um, that doesn't really seem right to the retailers. And in this industry of, of, of knives and EDC gear, the retailer is a critical part of all this. So I... I don't know. I just don't know how I feel. Let me know what your thoughts are on that because I feel like it's really a double-edged sword. I don't think it's fair to the retailers that this is happening. But let me know what you think about that. I really want to know your guys' opinion. And to be honest, I'm still forming mine. But my gut tells me that it doesn't really seem fair. But anyway, that's that. I thought it was worth throwing out there. Um, size comparisons. What all do we have here? I actually, in all honesty, I don't have any other OTFs right now. I sold all my Microtech OTFs. I do still have some Microtechs, but not an OTF. Uh, but what we do have here is the, uh, the, the Hogue Ritter, uh, the RSK, which is the full size, basically a large Griptilian, which actually measures up very, very nicely to that. And then I also have here the, um, the CJRB Feldspar. This is the button lock, but it's also the same size as the large Feldspar. And, uh, as you can see, two really good size comparisons in length there. And, uh, what else do we have here? Let's see, a couple smaller ones to kind of change, change up the uh, sizing. Uh, we got the Kaiser Mini Critical. And uh, let's see, just for just for sizing purposes, this is a completely different knife, but the Civivi Elementum, there you go. I think it pretty much knows. You guys, if you've ever handled a Microtech Ultratech, also basically the exact same size as this, uh, maybe a little differences in, in, in width and stuff like that. But in terms of length, very much the uh, direct competition to a Microtech Ultratech. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get into this and let's start with the blade. Now, when I unbox this, you guys know I, I raved about it pretty strong. 
Um, that was all basically about aesthetics and the brief action that I experienced with it out of the box. So after carrying it now for well over a week, um, and I really did carry this. This was kind of like low-key in my other pocket for about a week because I really wanted to get a full feel on this because OTFs can be a little a little weird sometimes. They can... Uh, they can have more problems than folding knives, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, there's more moving pieces. There's there's just more going on with them. Um, so I wanted to give it a good run. And uh, in terms of the blade, I will say, and I still stand by this, this is easily the best looking OTF blade I've come across yet. Um, I do really like their Warncliffe blade. I think that's right up there too. But this nice clip point is just, just the right amount of belly for me. Um, no recurve, nice tip, nice strong tip. That S35VN steel will hold up just fine. Um, an edge on this guy coming in at 19 thousandths. This, I can confidently say, is the sliciest OTF blade I've ever had. Um, it's, it, and probably the best cutting geometry of any two, which still isn't the, I mean, it's a narrow blade and at 19 thousandths, it's good, but it goes from 19 thousandths up to 125 thousandths pretty quick. Um, but still in terms of just sliciness and EDC use this, this, this ranks at the top for me. And I've had, I was counting last night, trying to figure out just how many other OTFs I've had. And I've had seven other Microtech OTFs. I've had four Ultratechs. I've had an 85, I have had a uh, combat Troodon, and I have had the other little, the Exocet. So there's my seven right there. Um, and again, this is not a video to knock Microtech or bash Microtech, because I know there's stuff going on between those two companies right now. Um, but I never had any issues with any of my Microtech knives. I just sold them because there was little things about microtech that started to really bother me over time with mainly their OTFs. I do still have my, I, I do still have my Exocet and I also have my SOCOM Elite. So I'm still a microtech fan. I'm not, not, I'm not totally kicking them aside, but in terms of OTF, this one really does take the cake. And I'm, a lot of my comparisons are going to be to microtech because again, they're the only ones that I've ever owned because I considered them the cream of the crop um, for a very long time. And I, and they're still very much in that conversation, but they have competition now. They also have competition with Guardian Tactical. I've never owned a Guardian Tactical, but I've handled one. I really like it. I just have some really, some issues with some of the design and design things going on with, with the Guardian Tactical. That's for another episode some other time. But in terms of the blade, sliciest OTF blade I've ever had. Um, very minimal blade branding. That's huge for an OTF. You know, you have the blade steel and you have axial. Nice, small, to the point, perfectly done. Well executed. Um, the blade play on this guy is very, very similar to a Microtech. Um, I have had some Microtechs that maybe had a slightly less blade play than this one. You know, maybe just a couple of them, but majority of the Microtechs I've owned were very much just like the blade play on this axial. So um, considering the fact that I'm obviously expecting a little blade play, there's, I'm fine with it. There's not, there's not too much blade play in my opinion. I'm totally fine with it. It reminds me of uh, probably five out of my seven Microtechs. Um, I feel like my Exocet and probably my, I want to say my Combat Troodon, I think my Exocet and Combat, <laughs> the biggest and smallest OTF I've ever had, um, I think those had slightly less blade play than this. But again, uh, OTFs, they can vary a little. Some, I feel like some do have a little more blade play than other, and that just depends on, you know, the assembly and whatnot. But you can really get into the weeds when you're talking about assembly of something like an OTF. But overall, I find this blade play completely acceptable, does not affect the action of this knife one bit, so no real issue there. Um, probably my favorite thing about this blade, well, probably my favorite behind the nice slicey edge and, uh, yeah, excellent edge, but there's no stupid pointless fullers or blade holes that do nothing but create drag when you're cutting. You know, you see that on Guardian Tactical, you see it on Microtech, um, you probably, uh, other manufacturers too, but this one, nice, smooth, no fuller, no holes, just steel. So when you have to go through and push through a long cut, you don't have anything that's going to be catching the sides or creating drag. You know, this is basically acting like somewhat of a, you got the swedge up here and then it just stays flat up here with nothing, nothing to pull on the sides. So very well done there and helping make a blade just that much more effective. So I really do appreciate that. 
a whole hell of a lot because I feel like every OTF out there has some type of just pointless hole or fuller that adds nothing but aesthetics to it, but it hurts the overall performance of the blade. So I'm glad to not see that on this one. Now going into the handle and ergos, for an OTF, which are usually, you know, kind of boxy and neutral, um, I will say this, holding this in hand, it fills the hand a lot better than an Ultratech. And I'm going to use an Ultratech a lot in this, you know, when I'm comparing this, because that, again, that is the direct competition to this, the Microtech Ultratech, basically the same size, feels a whole heck of a lot better in hand, um, no hot spots, obviously. And the clip is a million times better than any other OTF clip I've ever seen. Uh, totally deep carry, nice and plain. No issue with that. It's, it's great. You can, it's completely swappable. You can move it from left to right side. Really like the way they did that with one screw, just slides in and out. Um, there was a lot of small details on this knife that were executed extremely extremely well love this super clean show side with no screws all the screws are on the clip side um very nice minimal subtle branding of the axial logo here and then you have this usa flag down here which i think is badass no color or anything just milled in and coated over with color um, it's great. And you got these little slots on the side that help, I, I'm assuming, are used for a little jimping that you can push your thumb in. And they really do actually provide, provide a really good amount of bite on your thumb. So I uh, really like that a whole lot. Now, the actuator, another thing that's very important to note on this one, the actuator is very easy on the thumb. Doesn't give you that actuator thumb, which can, you know, tear up your thumb, give you some, uh, you know, marring and peeled skin and whatnot. So it's easy on the thumb, and then there's also very little. Very, you shake it, and there's no rattle. I've had numerous microtechs where the actuator, it's more so when the blade's open. There must be some type of tension as to when the blade's closed. But when the blade's open, the actuator will rattle. Little to no rattle from that actuator when the blade's open, and that's awesome. It makes me feel like I have a much more durable OTF in hand. And even... When it's closed, there's none, obviously. And I, I have had one one or two Microtechs. I think it was, it wasn't my Bounty Hunter. It was either my red or green Ultratech. The actuator even rattled, like, when the blade was closed, which is a little more rare. But nonetheless, anytime an actuator rattles, it bothers the hell out of me. But you don't have that at all with this at any point in the knife. So really, really like this nice, solid actuator that is very easy on the thumb. Uh, now, going into the action, uh, the action, in all honesty, is identical to a Microtech, in my opinion. I, I don't see any difference whatsoever. There may be just the slightest, slightest difference in sound, but I think that may even change depending on which room you're in, you know? So, if you're in a more empty room that echoes more, it might sound a little weirder, but... I, I really can't 100% say that I notice a big difference in sound. Um, I can 100% say the action is just as good as the Microtech. 100% just as good as the Microtech. It's actually, in my opinion, the actuator is smoother. So you, I do factor that into the actual blade coming in and out, the action of the actuator. So um, it's I do think it's just a little hair ahead of Microtech, but it's also not nearly as smooth as a Guardian Tactical, as you guys know, Guardian Tactical has the ball bearings under the actuator that make those things incredibly smooth. Sometimes I wonder if those aren't too smooth. Like if you were using the knife real hard, you could somehow, you know, pull back on the actuator and close the blade. I don't know. I just, that's been a very, that's always been in the back of my mind with a Guardian Tactical. Um, but this to me is the perfect amount of tension on an actuator and nice smooth action that you get. Um, so the action is a huge winner for me. And the overall thoughts on this guy, they're about as good as they can be. Um, it truly is my favorite OTF by a significant margin in terms of materials, aesthetics, performance. Uh, the Axial Shift really does take the cake. Now, there's always room for improvement, and I hope Axial continues. They seem to be a company that really listens to their to their consumers, to their fans, to their customers. They want to give them what they want, and um, I hope they continue to do that.
I hope they can continue to do that. I don't know enough about them to really be like, I'm not trying to sound like the biggest Axial fan. I don't even have a code through them or anything. I just simply like their knives a lot. So that, and that's what this channel is about. It's not to, it's not to be, you know, get discount codes through everyone and then just say good things to help them sell knives. It's about telling you guys the truth. And I really do feel like this is the best OTF I've ever handled. Now, granted, I've never handled a Hawk Deadlock. I've kind of been putting that off just because I've heard once you handle one, it ruins all the other ones for you. So, um, you know, take that for what it's worth. And although I have to admit, while I, while I do really love this Axial OTF, um, I cannot wait to see the day where there's more companies than just Hawk Knives producing OTFs with no blade play. Um, you know, someday we're going to get there. I, 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 the patent has to run out someday and, uh, it'll probably be like the access lock that went to everyone else's able lock and, and, and river lock and crossbar lock of all different types. Um, someday that day is going to come, but until then I am very happy with my axial shift and I am deeming this, uh, the best OTF knife, especially considering the price, the best OTF knife on the market. Um, it really is a great knife, and I hope Axial continues to grow and continues to make improvements. And uh, that's that, guys. That is the Axial, Axial Shift. Let me know what you think about this OTF. Um, let me know what you think about OTFs in general. And uh, just where would you put Axial in terms of Microtech, Guardian Tactical, uh, Heretic, all the other ones out there. I want to know your thoughts on that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.